title of the entire music festival this year. As always, it's, it's our garish night that we set everything um, off to for the rest of the weekend. And hopefully those who are uh, staying around for the weekend uh, have a lovely time. Um, I would just like to say that uh, this event tonight is uh, sponsored by uh, on Botanical Botanical Gin. <laughs> Honestly, that is water. Water and Chris McIntyre is here again with us, who will have some mad stories, no doubt, from our trips to South Hewitt. So all I would say is. I'm glad I don't work on any of her farms or uh, <laughs> some of the stories that happen um, from there. Um, sadly, um, Callum Alec has had a call of ill this year um, uh, and was in hospital. They phoned him from his hospital bed the other night there. Um, so we've had to do a bit of rearrangement. Uh, and Ross Martin, who was going to accompany him, um, Himself and Gilly Shaw uh, are uh, going to interspace it. We don't know what's going to happen tonight. We'll just <laughs> go with the flow, and the more drink you consume, the better. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, we'll start off the evening just before I hand over to Chris um, with um, Susan Sagarik and uh, the choir there in the back. We just do. Ba 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 Okay? 
you need to excuse the narrow passageway. I've noticed it's very narrow. I have to think of the passageways. Um, I got barred out of the path bar many years ago when I was about 12. Um, <laughs> I was with a fellow friend, a nurse, and if those of you who are familiar with the path bar, do you remember Teddy? Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, Teddy had a thing about the passage in the old L-shaped path bar, and he said, you're blocking my passage, and Biddy, quick as a flash, was a nurse, said, take a laxative. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, out. <laughs> and I didn't even got my first trick on the street. What kind of place this is? And then years later, many, many years later, when I was about 13, I took Donald, my husband, to the back bar, because he wanted, he's from Uist. And Uist people, you know, that's a good place to go to. For those people that are not familiar, where are you all from? London. London. They all don't know the fat <laughs> Anybody from any other arts and parks? Where? New South Wales. Where's that? Australia. 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 Gee, we're getting further away. <laughs> At the back there. Sky. 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 Anyway, the story I was, I was going to try and say was Donald wanted, I said to him, I lived in Glasgow, he lived in, in Lewis. I said, Where do you want to go? Or where do you want to go? He says, Take me to the park bar. And I thought, okay. So I took him to the park bar because the park bar is usually heaving, it's got loads of people in it, and there was one wee guy sitting in a corner. He was really disappointed, so he was. And I thought, good, I don't have to come back here. Because when the park bar is heaving with people, and you're my height, the big guys go in and they see a gap. And they make straight for the gap with a full pint glass or two. And they right up and they see those little midgets standing in the very space they want. Because when they look over the top of everybody, they all they see is a gap. They don't see the midgets. Anyway, enough of this rubbish. So, we're going to start with. Almost traditionally, we start with either the pipes, the box, the fiddle, or the classic. We don't have a classic. We may have a fiddle. We don't have any pipes, so we'll go for the box. And for those of you that don't know or not familiar with a box, it's not a box. It's an accordion of sorts, or a button key, or a melodeon. Okay? Or an instrument of torture, whatever you want to call it. Not in the hands of Alec. Because Alec has been coming here for a long time, plays us in the button box, and he's a damn player. So, big hand for that.
Elons, the Highlands, the Guyland, places like that. When you hear this kind of music, they usually gauge how happy you are by how you tap your feet. Okay? These big feet were going. So they were going well. Yeah? The bigger the feet, the better. More tapping. Another thing you can gauge how good people are is when you sway in your chair. You know, you're swaying to the music. And when you've had a few more of the tunes, you're swaying a bit more. You're enjoying yourself then. So have any of you been to the distillery, you visitors, you must go. Um, I went with my cousin Delina, and of course I was the designated driver. I didn't get to try any of the gins. Not that I like the gin, actually, very much. But Delina took mine as well as her own. Delina's 84. She's <laughs> clean by the time she got up the road. Right? Yeah, Kaylee in the van, because I drive a van. Very fun. So, Alec, well I'm dying. That was very good music. I thoroughly enjoyed it. <coughs> Who have we got next? Oh, well, we've got trouble. Yeah, this is the person who always gets on to me and tells me, don't talk too much! You're talking too much, you're telling me rubbish. Um, and then he phones me up and says, you do it next year. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know what he's going to sing, probably a few Gaelic songs. The man himself, Ian McPherson. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
sort. Yeah. Um, are you singing or dancing or leaping out the window? Because you're having them. Singing. Okay. Big hand for a young lady. I want to make.
here and you can count them on one hand. It's so, so good to hear the young coming up. Nice darling, from And for those of you that are visitors, let me remind you again, there are two types of garlic song. There is the traditional, what they call traditional, which is lots of nice wee curly bits of it, like I want to have traditionals. We do a lot of traditionals in our singing. And we don't force them at all, we just do natural. Not everybody's a natural, so the traditional, traditional singer. So there are other singers who will sing kind of with fewer traditionals. There's nothing to separate them. It's not a good or a bad thing. You get some real diehard who say, ah, oh, traditional music is the best. No. And then you get the others who say, I've got a hate inspiration to slide all over the place, you know. It's, you know, it's going down the banister. Um, so it's kind of horses for courses, all right? So you'll hear grace notes, and you'll hear not so many grace notes. Look at the Irish, you never think that as well. I'm sure about the Welsh, and I don't know what they do in New Zealand. <laughs> so I'm going to move a little bit around and jump again, because I've had quite a few solos, so is uh, Ross and Lily around? Yeah. yeah, so we're going to have a wee bit of instrumental, maybe a bit of song, I don't know. They've just stepped in to uh, help us out because Carl Malik is a gospel. It's very free. The sound from pretty well the gospel, so we will not. Never mind. So, um, big hand for Ross Park and Lily Shaw, please.
um, Gareth Montes. Um, I'm trying to read the room here. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs>
is the song words were written by a man from from Wales. Yeah, Roy Bridge. Roy Bridge. Uh, Alistair Grant. And the tune was written by a man from Glenfin and Charlie Farnham.
learners and three fluids. And the three learners ran rings around the fluids. They, they remembered everything, never made a mistake. And the three fluids, all three of us from South Sea Rusty, couldn't get anything right. These are what I mean. And then to make matters worse, one of the guys was called, in the sketch, was called Mito. But the guy that was called Mito was called David, but the other guy was. His real name was Mika. And <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, who the hell am I talking about? <laughs> and then there was one line, one line, and there was one word, and I couldn't remember it. And out my head, I'd left it somewhere in the railway station of party. Couldn't get this word right. So they said, the guy that was a producer, Bardo, good old guy, started off with Jet Black Beard, but at the end of the two weeks, he grew up. And his favourite phrase was, like that, look, don't worry, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> and then they had things that were in bold, and these are apparently points of learning. So they have to be absolutely exact. You cannot change any of the words. And us three, Uishti, couldn't get these damn words right. The thing is, the script was written by somebody from North Hewis, the then sent up to Storm to somebody from Lewis, who does their own spin on it, and then sent it back to somebody at Pacific Key, who's a glass region who does their own spin on it. <laughs> and there was one word called Kalanich. See, I've still got to think about it. Kalanich. It wasn't my word. I couldn't get, I didn't care too much about it. But apparently Kalanich, we were told, was not only a point of learning, but it's a Gaelic word for picked. How many picks do we know? <laughs> <laughs> when did you last pick me a pick? You know what? <laughs> anyway, that was fine, Alan. I couldn't get the colony. I couldn't get the other word. They put Mel sitting in front of me, and when it came to the word I couldn't get, she was mouthing it. And I'm going, what? Not that through. <laughs> All the way through. Twelve scripts, all I could hear was cut, and I got through, cut, and I got through. I don't think I could get enough after at all. <laughs> but if you want to speak Gaelic, or speaking Gaelic, and that's the only thing, this was the third one. This is for the cheetah. See, when you're that serious, it's hello, camera, ha, and you can catch it. It's all easy peasy. Second one is something like, honey, dog, and boo, and going to the shop. We had stupid things about cats and pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Cookery programs were honest to God, you have to watch the screen because you can tell. See, you used to. One is very good, the one is really good, and I think you should give him a job. But the other two, myself and the other one, definitely suck us. <laughs> so, the moral of my story is don't say yes to the BBC when you think you're getting easy money because it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I will never ever. Anything at all like that till we throw in the next time. <laughs> okay, we're going to go in this order. We're going to slow things down to Riper, we're going to go up again to Fiona, because she's tall, and then she's tall. <laughs> then we're going to Adam, and then we're going to Callum, and then the choir. Happy with that? Good. Yeah. Right, big hand for Riper. <laughs> Oh, 
about twelve. <laughs> Thank you.
sing at the gym now. <laughs> so this next song is a Sky song and it's a great example of one of the first bromance songs um, because these, um, oh here I can't remember who wrote it, but there was these two guys and whenever one went away for any length of time they used to write songs about each other. So it's great. And the chorus, so all you folk from New South Wales, London, everything, you're going to pick it up. I'll Double up the chorus at the end and I want you all joining in. <laughs> if anyone wants to harmonise, you're more than welcome. <laughs> Especially if it keeps me in tune. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is Orenbury and Brech McLeod. He's a McLeod. It's a song about him. <laughs>
from we from Bhagavad Hor or Hidram Hadram Ho. Basically means by that stage we're nearly drunk. It's a good film. Right, we're going to go and I haven't heard anything sing here. It's from Yeah. 
Chile, que era oferta na piada na Michê. Toda a moderna dinha, gostando a sua privilégia. Ora, minha doce gera, se vai queimar a minha vida. Ora, minha doce gera. Vai, quem chama a escarpala, quando a curia curi além, se não posso de furor e marrem, que te vai dar o seu gostreik. Ora, minha doce gera, se vai queimar a minha vida. Ora mi niente non si gera. Caro io la tolle sale, le vong vorrei tri cramaste. A caro cruce ma manis, sana da ca è segni. Ora mi niente non si gera. Si va qui ma noi mi niente. Ora mi niente non si gera. Ora mi niente non si gera. Si Ora mi dito non si gera Grazie Che è un slancio Sto in due Che è un sogno da slancio Sto in due 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 I'm wishing you uh, health and happiness and perhaps full of joy. Uh, your houses without a drop of, well, what do you call it in English? That kind of rain that's full of soot that drips through the thatch. You know what I'm talking about? There's not a soul in here that doesn't still thatch their own house. Look at how you that. And uh, your meal chest's full. Do we all know what the winter's like without a full meal chest? Do we not? Anyhow, um, so I, I was coming, I was coming in there. Um, well, Kinnagal Khor, Kinnagal Khor, when I was singing, and um, um, I, I realised that I've got this pair of absolutely brand new shoes on. So of course I'm trying to bend the shoes just to be, be quiet. Of course, but the shoes are absolutely flat and will not be bent. So I'm gonna... <laughs> anyway, uh, I survived. She survived, uh, and then the latest glass fell. Then they're smashing drinks. Can I deal with the stress? <laughs> um, so I thought we'd just tell like, uh, a wee story uh, now, because again, um, this fella who gathered these stories, uh, the stories would otherwise have been lost. Um, and they're, they're good stories, but they're funny wee stories, so I thought we'd tell one again. And folk go, oh, but I mean, do you not want to publish these first in case people steal them? No, I want people to steal them. I want them to be told. Uh, and if they're good enough, they'll travel. So, uh, here's the story about a tailor. So, the tailor back in the day um, weren't just arriving in a township to repair somebody's trousers when they tore the crotch into it or whatever, you know. They were bringing uh, the news from place to place. <coughs> Tailors were often relied upon uh, to bring news of neighbouring uh, townships and people that were a wee bit further out in different glens and whatever. Other side of the mountains, and, <clears throat> and this tailor uh, who worked in the, uh, the Bale, central Argyll area, uh, he's been along the side of Lahoe, and Lahoe is, of course, the correct way to say Lahoe. Uh, silly English place names with you know uh, transliterations and kind of those of rubbish. They talk about uh, that this Gaelic signs been a waste of money. I think the bloody English signs are a waste of money <laughs> because the thing is. There's not a Gaelic speaker alive that can make any sense out of one of these English signs, and there's not an English speaker that can make any sense out of them either. So they don't serve anybody. It, 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 you know, if we just had to be Gaelic, then they would serve us and the hell of the rest of these. <coughs> anyway, so he's gone along the side of Lochaw, and of course he realises he, he's on the wrong side of Lochaw. Now there's not really a, lot, a wrong side of Lochaw, both sides are beautiful, <laughs> uh, but they've been forested uh, with, you know, invading species of the region, spruce and things like that, so they're not as beautiful as, as they once were. But anyway, he's on the wrong side of the floor, whatever side that is, and he decides he needs over the other side, and he said, like, gosh, how am I going to do this? You know, stupid idiot, I think I'm going up to Clarky for a job, and actually I'm supposed to be in Bochredin, anyway. But as he's walking up the side of the floor, he runs into one of the servants, uh, one of the killies of Clarky Campbell, which is quite some time ago. And, uh, 
so that the, the girl he meets him and says, Her nakatuha, yeah, kaje ne akakat tanju. So there you are, Taylor. Well, what's your news today? Because he's relying on on the, on the tailor to give him the local gossip and the gossip from Father Abim. And the tailor, oh, I've had it, 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 I'm sorry, my friend, I, I, have, I have no, no news. And I says, I'm desperately disappointed. The tailor's always good for the guy gossip. So the, the girl is saying, I've not seen my hats, and that's no use. You know? hey, well, I mean, what, J.J. J.L. J.L. Over to have a look at that. So you went over this other side of the law thing, you look a bit confused. Maybe she can go there, that would be great, he says. Um, so the girl says, Hey, hey, me to do that for the evening, that. You need to take your clothes off then. <laughs> and Taylor says, Oh, sorry, could you do that? Why is that? Just take your clothes off. I mean, it's, you know, telling a tailor to take his clothes off, it's like telling a Dentist who takes false teeth out of it. Telling a doctor to ruin his false leg or you know, that sort of thing. You don't do it. Anyway, this is what's happened. The tailor not wanting to fall foul of the Clan Campbell. Because we know what happens. We know what happens. <laughs> Any McMillans or Lamonts or McGregors or McLaughlins or anybody like that in the room, then we know, we know, we know what goes on. So, anyway. Taylor takes off his clothes and puts him in his knapsack, so there he is, absolutely stark naked, standing on the edge of the loft, thinking, how does this help me get over the other side of the loft? <laughs> I couldn't fly it to start with, take my clothes off, isn't it going to help? Of course, the girl says, Nusha, I think we should have a great deal. Get out of my back. So it goes from weird to weirder. Taylor gets up to his back, and there he is, thinking, right, I had no idea how I was getting out of the loft, I've still got no idea, but I'm hanging on for dear life. Anyway, into the loch the girl goes swimming in the side of the loch with this wee tail on his back. <laughs> I mean, the girl is no cold at all. He's one of these men and his hair from the top of his body to the bottom and right up to the tip of all his extremities, you know. Anyway, <laughs> so the tailor's shivering away and they go all the way over the loch. The girl just made and strides like the bed of the you know. Merman, he is. They get to the other side, and the gilly puts the tailor off his back, and the tailor's done weird like that. It's really no clue as to what's actually happened. It's all too serene. And the gilly turns around and says, Ha, and yeah, I've got a Denise Dean in show. Now you've got a story to tell. Sheep stealing. And so the fella makes this song 
about having it convinced after a skin fear alcohol to steal some sheep. So rather than the I'm never drinking again song, this is the I'm never stealing sheep again song. <laughs> they don't tell me he's had me woken up after a night's good sheep stealing. No, that's it. I'm, that, I'm, I'm putting that behind me. <laughs> never again. Obviously, he takes the sheep that have been properly marked from the bit of ears, clipped and all the rest of it. So, you know, it's well known whose sheep they are. And he decides to take those sheep and then try and punt them the next day. And people are like, I'm very good. I recognise those markings. I know whose sheep they are. So he gets rumbled and huppled in various other interesting verbs. You can apply the situation. Ends up in Inverera jail, just up the road there. And here he is in Inverera jail making this song. Uh, myself and my kids sing this song everywhere we can, so it is alive in our house, but uh, here it is here for yourselves. Uh, and the chorus again, you probably start to pick that up as it goes along. <coughs> Sun the mach, wie breit wo dünn geht, min janach, hönen gönach, chat wo gade schach, schä, jus, chän, fiach, min arere, ho, die mach, wo kore, no, hier, Uh, so, 
This fellow MacDonald used to uh, he used to take tours out of the boat from the pier at uh, and so near. And this was around about the period when um, people from the south of this island you know, of Britain decided that Scotland wasn't this horrible place full of drunk maniacs. And, well, maybe it still was, but they were going to come here on holiday. It wasn't a dark, foreboding hell anymore. It was actually quite attractive. And Queen Victoria had even got to the stage where she'd become obsessed with the place and it was a new fad to come up here every year and uh, all the rest of it. So suddenly we start getting people who had previously thought that uh, we weren't, you know, worth our even knowing, uh, suddenly we're up for holidays. And one such coterie of very, very, very upper class <laughs> English folk arrived to take a tour out with this dog. Um, and, and this is the story of what it, it ensued. I may, I may or may not elaborate slightly on this story. You know, I may or may not exaggerate um, also. But uh, anyway, <coughs> Joe McDonald uh, was able to take out this, this group of uh, very fancily clad uh, class English women uh, and into the boat we go. <coughs> and off they chug away from the pier and McDonald standing at the hill. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, out they go. And they're no sooner out in the middle of the loch than, of course, the questions start. And of course, McDonald, partially as a tour guide, as, as well as uh, the master of this, this ship, is happy enough to answer questions, but it's the kind of questions that start coming. I say, McDonald! <laughs> Yes, madam, what can I do for you? I say, uh, what are those sheep doing there? Uh, well, you see, madam, there were previously people there. Then people like you cleared the people from there and replaced them with sheep. So now there are only sheep. Oh, I say, uh, impudent man. Well, you did ask. On they go. Beautiful, beautiful day. Beautiful day. Imagine it. Mock some linears. Fun gravy. Go three as a gas. And, uh, of course, the next question comes. You know. I say, McDonald, yes, madam, what can I do for you? What's that rock doing there, sticking up out of the water? Isn't that dangerous? Well... <clears throat> You see, madam, that rock has been there since before the time of my grandfather's 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 grandfather. And it will be there long after I, and more importantly, you, are dead. Oh, oh, impudent swine! Well, madam, you did ask. I say, McDonald, all oh, right, yes, what is it this time? You see, there's people there fooling around in that field. Don't they have jobs? Right. <laughs> That's it. You, madam, can go to hell. <laughs> Woman, and whatever it is that you said, you'll 
take it back. It means your job. Inform you that you don't have to go to hell after all. <laughs> hey, I'll finish up. No, so thanks, thanks very much for listening. Uh, thanks most kindly again for the invite. And thank you to everyone who sung today. It was uh, an absolute pleasure to sit and listen. And, uh, I feel I was well warmed up. Yeah, and great to just get these stories and songs aired. Uh, I'll maybe sing again sometime this year. <laughs> so this this song was made by a fellow called Johnny Markovilka. And Johnny Markovilka um, hailed from a place called Lochgurne, where as they say in English, again it makes no sense to man their face, never mind Gael or native English speaker, Loch Gear. Now what does Gear mean? What does gear mean? Gure, oh, gure means the little cup lock, the little slot lock. Now that makes marvellous sense. And if they had just renamed it slot lock, then that, you know, or slot lake, everybody would understand what it means. Lock gear, what does that mean to anybody? Anyway, so from Loch Gear he was, and they lived in the same house called Ingestia, the castle, eh, on a wee peninsula in Loch Gear. They lived in the same place for about 200 years. Eh, so they're a long, long, long place. And Johnny Markovilka came back from being at sea for many years and of course realised that his own culture, myself and Callum had a bit of a yarn about this earlier on about how difficult it is to sort of live with this idea that his own culture was practically dead. You know, there was nobody to speak the language to anymore and people that understood the way he thought, the way he saw the world, the way he felt about life, you know, just the, the sensibility. Um, we're few and far between, and this song is called Hanilloch Gure Marabatischi. Now, Johnny put a tune to this, to these words, but he said himself it was crap. <laughs> so, on this recording with uh, a lovely pal of mine, David Clement, who also worked at the School of Scottish Studies, Johnny can be heard saying, Well, I put a tune to this song, but it's not great. If you ever fancy putting another tune to it, <laughs> And David never did that, but I have. So, um, I spent a lot of time with Johnny's nephew, who was the last native speaker of the dialect in the place that I grew up, Robbie Machtevilka from Old Gilphead. Uh, and uh, Robbie was very pleased indeed to know that we uh, would have another opportunity to do some of the song. So, this is Hanny Lochgur and Marabatishje. Hanny Lochgur and Marabatishje. Han ned en gavje sang en gavsta. 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 Han ned en
set of fish by 20. <laughs> Every day is a school day. Uh, Robbie would pick and he talked about there uh, very briefly and you uh, because he was married to my uncle. Uh, um, these are similar stories that you would have heard in days gone by at the fireside. You know, there's different types of singing. Uh, for caves, for concerts, traditional, non-traditional, uh, bards to the people that we call uh, the folk songs, poets, that we call them bards. Very quickly, Fiona, the problem is on all in Huh? Between them, I would say Carmen Ross and Rybert here, uh, between them in this room, we possibly have the biggest storage of Gaelic songs, popular Gaelic songs. Nice to hear Av. Uh, uh, can you add the contribution? Av, not Av. Nice to hear him coming up, young talent coming up. Nice to hear Fiona and her lovely accompanist. So the Gaelic, I think, is pretty well safe in the hands of all these people. Huge generations. Give them all a round of applause. and they'll see you out. They'll play you out. Okay? Bella's a legend. If you don't sing, then... Wait a minute, you're going to be sad. Come on. Come on. Well, they would ask you to conduct it. Right. He's a song. There's an audience that will sing nice music.
a score of something. It's over. Chicken down way in the head. Up a shit. Chicken down way in the head. Chicken down when you have dog. Chicken down in the marshal. Chicken down the marshal. Out of the cheer of the hour. Okay. <laughs> Is it a soprano oh. line we can sing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mountain. It's a bad music, but never mind. It is still soprano. Chukin down, go ahead and go ahead. Chukin down, go ahead and go ahead. Chukin down, go ahead and go ahead.
Thank you. 